folks, Ariel over here at Fineth with a little tour of the almost finished, more on that in a minute, chicken coop. So let's start with it. This is the run. This uh, we put together promptly after the coon attack that killed all the ducks uh, many months ago. This started with, as you can probably tell, a, um, a dog kennel. These are made by, I think two companies make this heavy welded wire version versus the chain link version. Um, Tartar and maybe Bell and Steel are the two I'm aware of in, in the U.S. anyway. But these two by four inch square um, or rectangle holes in the welded steel is exactly the same as the fencing we used around the property perimeter. It's the same weight. It's it's like a cattle panel, um, you know, type of wire versus a chain link. Um, so that was on the sides, and then because we didn't want anything to get in the top or the bottom. Curly is chasing a raven. He's about to come by through the camera. He makes very sure no big birds like that come near his chickens. I don't know if the camera picked up the raven, but I think you saw Burley go flying by. Um, anyway, because of aerial predators, things like coons can obviously climb and so on, we took two more of the same fence panels we had used for our perimeter fence, put them on the top, wired them on securely, and there are two more underneath here that are also wired on securely. So unless you've got something strong enough to bend this welded steel, uh, I think even honestly a grizzly bear would struggle with that. Um, at least it would take them some time. Then uh, you're a little spaz. Um, this should be secure. Now down here lower, you can probably see there's a, a finer wire mesh. This is hardware cloth. Again, it's a pretty sturdy, um, you know, kind of wire. But the reason I put that from here to the ground is that chickens and other poultry often toward evening and when they go to sleep almost go like comatose. Like if you try to pick one up during the day and they'd flutter and screech and run away from you, you try to pick them up at night and they, it's almost like they're drugged and unconscious. Um, and I have heard of people having, you know, a secure coop that nothing could get into and still having things like coons or cats reach through and still kill birds by yanking off wings or heads and so on um, because they, they're, they're too unconscious or too dumb, one or the other or both, to get up and run away from that ability for the creature to reach through the side. So that's why this goes the entire way around the base there. If it got up above here and tried to reach down, I can't think of anything having long enough legs to actually reach a bird sitting on the ground there. So predator proof is definitely a big deal. I do not have the population, even though they're not far away up in the mountains, it's pretty rare to see anything like a bear, a wolf pack, a mountain lion, etc. those bigger predators out here. The, the mountains are right there and there's more behind you. They're not far, but I don't expect to see them here. But we have a raccoon, as you probably remember from the sad duck news video, um, that killed a bunch of ducks and the thing is huge. I've had the game cameras out here and have caught it on camera multiple times. It's still hanging around. It managed to actually pick a chicken tractor up. It did not dig under it or tear through it, but picked it up and killed several more chickens um, just a couple weeks ago, which was very frustrating. Um, we did, these are these, you know, live traps. Um, Velcro got herself stuck in one earlier. I had to open the gate and let her out, and occasionally the chickens get themselves stuck in. I have to let them out. But I have two of them, and they're staying here because this guy keeps coming around. <laughs> I 
I love my companions when I'm trying to talk. Um, and we actually successfully trapped him. There's all the different kinds of things I've ever read coons like. Uh, wet cat food, dry cat food, tuna, marshmallows, etc. And he actually got in here one night. And before these black steel... Oh, there's a bird. Burley's always on bird patrol. Um, before these black chunks of steel were welded on here, he got in here one night. And the thing is, he's huge. He's almost as big as Burley from the... the camera photos. I've not seen him in daylight. Um, he bent this steel door in half and uh, bloodied himself up a little bit and bent some wire and got out again. Um, so he's still around. He has not gotten to any bird that's been inside here, um, but I have seen him prowling around trying to reach through. So if this hardware cloth was not on the sides, I'm pretty sure he would have reached through and killed birds through that. Um, and we'll see if we ever get him trapped. But um, because he does not need to be around here. He's big enough to eat you, too. Yeah, that's why you sleep inside at night, at least until you get bigger, even though you hate when I put you inside. Um, and here you can see a better view of their, their little ramp that goes to and from the uh, run to the barn. And um, this is solidly screwed in and locked in. There's, there's a tiny bit of ventilation cracks there, but um, no, no way for anything to get inside there. Um, so that's this rod, and this is a, you know, nice, easy to walk in place. So if they come inside, you can probably see we used a, reused a old, if the camera's shaking, that's because Velcro's trying to climb the tripod, a old fence post for our fence cleanup to prop these, these two upper panels on the run up, because otherwise from their weight, they kind of sag down, which would have made it very hard to walk around in here with that, bowing them up instead of down. It's nice, even Clay, who's taller than me, can walk around in here without hitting our head. And the ceiling is nice and secure. I actually got up there and walked on it once um, because I need to grab something. And it's pretty sturdy. Uh, it doesn't flex easily. That post is jammed well into the ground. And as I said, that same wire is on the floor underneath here. What's on top is just lots of wood chips. They're something I have access to a good bit of for free because there's always people chipping uh, trees to clean up for fire danger in the area and so that's made a nice bedding they like to, to scratch in it and it stays pretty clean and dry to walk around in. These two guys are only inside during the day because they're the two hens of the, the meat birds that were supposed to all be boys. That can happen. I'm not upset or anything. But these two are definitely hens. So I'm gonna see there's one buff Orphington and the other one I think is a, a Plymouth Rock maybe? I'm not sure. But we're going to see if I can get them to integrate in with the other laying hens. So far, nobody is convinced. Uh, the other hens just want to beat them up. So they're just living in here through the day, and the other guys run outside, and then they all come in together. But we're going to see if we can get them integrated into that flock and get them accepted and just keep them to lay some more eggs. But anyway, if you're wondering why there's only two birds in here, everyone else is off in the woods. Um, from here, we made this nice secure little uh, run, uh, shoot, path, ramp that goes into the barn from here. It's fully enclosed in wood. It's got a little ventilation there, but again, it's, it's totally secure. So nothing, um, no predator can get to them from there. And out here, the ducks have a couple of water buckets to play in. Um, I will, I change them every day anyway, because they muck them up. They're these black rubber, I don't know what that stuff's called, that even when they're frozen, you can kick the ice out of it and it doesn't shatter or break the bucket. Um, so that's there, and then we've got, you know, some extra feed hanging out here because, like I said, even though I've put them in the barn before, um, and they certainly could be in there, the ducks just never want to go inside. So they're in the creek all day, and then they usually just sleep on the ground out here at night. They could go in the barn. They don't like to. So my normal morning routine when I'm not talking to you is that I open the door, and I come in here, and I've got this handy little pull cord, which goes to the uh, trap door inside there. So from right here, I can just open it. I bet you're gonna see a chicken come running out here in just a second. Velcro wants to play with the cord, so I just loop that up for the day so it's out of the way. That keeps the door tied up. And this little chute, which is solid, and again, a uh, predator can't get inside from there, um, lets them come to and from the barn to the run if they want. Now, if it's a really, really, you know, cruddy weather day, um, like rainy, which the ducks don't mind at all, but the chickens seem to, um, 
sometimes I'll, or if I have to be gone or something like that, I'll just leave them where they can go from the barn to their secure run at any point that they feel like. Good morning, Velcro. Yeah, that you're why the chickens aren't coming out right away. You are, because you're scary. Come here. Oh yeah, and they're gonna go peck you. They're not entirely scared of you. <laughs> she thinks it's funny to make them jump and they've learned they can peck her back. And here's that same setup from the other side. These windows are just pretty much for the the winter just providing some sunlight and, and warmth in there through the day. If it's really cruddy weather, the ducks don't mind the wet, but if it's raining all day, the chickens prefer to stay out of it. So I just leave the door closed and they can freely go from the run to the barn. Or if I have to be gone for something, they do that and they're totally secure. Anytime I'm around, which is most days during the day, they like to go out and peck around in the woods uh, and grass and stuff all day and then they come back in at night. But anyway, this just lets in some sunlight. I can open them at this time of year, I wouldn't at all, but in the summer I probably will and again you can see their chute that goes back and forth and this is my little you know latch key string that lets me open the door right here while I'm standing outside there without even having to go inside or close it and um, if I want to secure them in the barn for any reason or out of it or whatever I can close that or just to reduce um, you know if it's at night and it's really cold just to have the opening closed. So then we come to the actual chicken barn itself. A bunch of people have asked questions about its size. It is 16 feet by 12 feet. So if you do the math on that square footage, since the tiny house is only about a hundred and a little over 160 square feet inside, that is more space than the tiny house for sure. It's almost exactly the same height uh, as the tiny house actually at the high side. Um, the reason we went that large was because for one, it's a lot easier to build it a little bigger than you need than to make it a little bigger once you're done building and you need it to be larger. Um, we've got a certain number of, you know, laying hens and roosters right now. Um, and the ducks, though they don't really seem to like going in the barn at all, they prefer to stay outside. They could go in anytime they want. I've put them in there and they just come out and say we don't like being inside. And there is more than just the birds in there. So this part of the wall is actually the feed room. Uh, the first six foot by 12 foot section there is feed room, which is all the bird feed, all the other poultry supplies, all my gardening stuff, just general storage area. And then the other 10 feet by 12 feet is bird space. And that also gives us enough space for not only these birds to have plenty of room, but for us to choose to do other things on down the road, like maybe add some more ducks again, um, especially if we need to, to be able to get some more females at some point. Um, to decide on down the road that maybe we want to raise some more eggs to sell or something like that. Uh, to decide we want to play around with turkeys at some point. Um, that's partly why the chute up and down um, from the, the run to the barn is so large. Even both our dogs can walk up and down that. A turkey can fit. It's, it's plenty large for the size of chickens we have now. Um, and so on. So that is the, uh, the size. Oh, and the, the front wall is actually 12 feet tall. That is because the short wall on the back side is eight feet, which gives you a standard inside height, lets you use standard doors, hang things and not hit your head, all of that. And to get a 412 pitch, if your short wall is gonna be uh, eight feet across that span, your, your top wall has to be 12 feet. That pitch lets snow slide pretty well. We obviously, we've been getting snow. They say it's 100% chance of snow today, but it's, it's shockingly pleasant right at the moment. So uh, we'll see if they are correct about 100% snow by later on. Um, anyway, that lets snow shed easily and it's all shedding, as you can see, away from here. So nothing is going to slide off onto the uh, run area on in front of the window or door. And um, it also makes the, the tall side, this is, is facing south the way I'm looking at you guys right now. So it, it lets the most sun and warmth hit the big warm side in the winter. So here's the entrance to the barn itself. I uh, got a little step up here and the second hand door that did look a little bit not so nice has been uh, straightened out from the way it was warped and with a new coat of paint looks pretty good. Got a little door step up here because this whole building is on piers. And if you ever need an outside doormat, these things are awesome. Um, this is a small one. I've got some bigger ones over by the shop door, but they're usually sold as anti-slip um, or anti-fatigue mats for like restaurants and stuff. But for an outside doormat, they're great for scraping off snow, uh, dirt, muck, any of that stuff. 
and because it just falls through those holes because they're a little bit thick and if you get anything stuck in there you just pick up the mat whack it, it falls out the holes and you lay it down again anyway they're excellent if you need an outside doormat for um reducing the amount of dirt hauled into your building of course in a barn it's not that big of a deal but i like to keep it as clean as i can in there If you're wondering about the funny glass on the door, that's because this was reclaimed from originally being a women's restroom door somewhere else. So it's got that like bubbly privacy glass, but that's just what we got with uh, using reclaimed free materials. Anyway, if you come in here, this is the feed room. So inside here, Clay built me nice, big, sturdy shelves. This lets me hold all of um, my tools, and everything to do with the birds. There are different waters and stuff I had when they were little. I've got cans for feed. I've got extra garden stuff stored here. Bird feeders, you know, like songbird feeders, just all of my stuff. And there's even bigger shelves on the wall behind you guys. Um, this just gives me a ton of storage space and easy to access you know, tools, and I don't spend much time in here in the dark, but if you saw a little tiny solar panel up on the far corner tucked under the eave out there, there is one little tiny, uh, like, motion detected solar light here in the, the feed room, so if I do need to come in and do something in the dark, I can see to do that. But otherwise, this is a, a very nice storage space that's excellent for um, just letting me keep all that stuff I had in the little... Uh, former outhouse tool shed before, plus everything else I didn't have then because at that point I didn't have poultry supplies and so on. So this is feed room and general storage space, which is lovely. Right over here is where the birds are. So for the room into the, the birds, this is another secondhand reclaimed free door. And one of the cool things it came with that I never would have thought about adding, but now seeing how neat it is and handy, I would probably do is this is one of those little peepholes, like I think of being in a you know hotel room door that lets me, you know, actually look inside there. And no, it's not up at eye level, but being placed right here uh, because this door actually came from a raptor center. So I think there was a hawk or an eagle or an owl or something like that living in here before. It is positioned so that I can see all four corners in there. I can peek in without disturbing the birds and see everything from the perches to the, the floor and so on. And that's kind of neat. So if I hadn't happened to get a secondhand free uh, door that had a peephole installed right there, I might actually buy one and, and drill a hole in my door and put it in because that's kind of handy. But let's go in and see the bird area. So now that the birds are all out for the day, you can see the door is the, to their little ramp is held open. This is its latch string going out there that I can pull and open from the outside so I don't even have to come in here. This floor has stayed amazingly dry in the weeks since they first came in here because we started letting them in even before we were really done. Um, and with some straw and wood shavings on the floor, they scratch around on it, but it has not gotten damp at all. Of course, the fact that we have a dry climate probably helps. They love their little chicken ladder to go up to their perches and, and sleep up high. And their ghost is going to go on up. She might be indignant that she actually has to use the stairs, but they are flying pretty well again like 100 foot flights and at least 8 plus feet in the air. So we just had to clip some wings again. So they don't take off over the fence and get themselves ate by things I can't protect them from. I love their sleepy bedtime cooey noises. Oh, we got a 
Got another little handy side to match up the stair steps. Just like that, one at a time, everybody gets up there to sleep for the night. On this other end, you can see the, their feet are hanging in here, the other end of their ramp to go up, and the nesting box area. So Clay helped me build this so it's a frame that simply holds standard five gallon buckets. So I can lift them out, take them out, clean them out, replace them, anything I want. But with five of them in there, they're really snug, they don't roll around, they don't shift. Um, and with a little bedding in there, if it don't bump it backwards, um, that should be a nice laying place. Used a little skinny pine stick there as their perch out front. They have not started to lay yet. These hens are just over four months old. A lot of hens don't start laying eggs till closer to six months, so we have not seen any eggs yet, but we are hoping to before too long to see some eggs getting laid. The water needs cleaned. I do this every morning. I just kick the chickens out and I always scratch stuff into it. But this is a standard chicken water, but what it's sitting in is another one of those rubber tubs just like I have outside and it's just a hair bigger than the water. So anything they splash um, gets caught with this drain pan rather than soaking the floor. So that seemed to have worked out pretty well to help keep it nice and dry in here, which is going to be more and more important as the weather gets colder. And when it's really cold, I may have to simply do one rubber tub inside the other because I'm afraid this will freeze up and blow up. But it hasn't froze in here yet, and so um, that's been working really good. I just have to occasionally bring my bucket in and dump the, the drain pan into that as well. And then the other thing I want to show you is over here through this doorway out into the feed room, they tend to like to, as they scratch and stuff, kick a lot of dirt and straw out there. So I did put in a couple boards here. I can easily, you know, step over that, but it does really keep the, the feed room much cleaner because they don't kick everything um, out into there. So that's been handy. Also straight across there, that little box is the muck out door. It opens from the outside, not the inside, but it lets me open um, that. It should only need done a couple times a year, but swing it up from the outside, I'll show you that. And then I've got a, a big open hole right here level on the floor where I can simply scoop everything out because that's higher than the ground out there because of the way the building sits up on it. Um, I've been calling them pontoons, but they actually are uh, skids, I can put like a wheelbarrow or a wagon or something like that under there and muck out anything that needs to go out directly into that and take it off to the compost pile and then latch the door down again. And as you can probably see, the walls in here are not currently insulated. The floor is. Somebody asked about why would you insulate the floor and not the walls? Um, a couple reasons. Chickens don't necessarily need heat or even much insulation. Their, their feathers provide that pretty well. And these are Icelandic chickens um, from a very, very cold part of the world. Uh, but the floor, if we ever wanted to go back and do anything different, would have been nearly impossible to insulate later. So that is done. It would be pretty easy to go back and if we ever wanted to insulate this, pop insulation into here, sheet it on the inside, and have an insulated room. We may do that at some point. Um, we're kind of up against it's turning into winter and we have to get everything done that has to be done before it's winter. That doesn't have to be. The birds seem very comfortable in here. If that changes, then we'll do something about it. Or if we ever decide we want to get rid of all the birds and turn this into a tiny house, then we'd insulate it or whatever. But uh, for now, it is not insulated here because uh, walls and ceiling here would be easy to go back and do down the road, the floor would have been almost impossible. So that's, uh, that seems to be working out great for now. The birds love it in here. So this is the outside of that door, the muck out door. What it's made to do is swing up, this little latch holds it there, and if you open these, it can do that. 
Now these I've got screwed down so tight right now that you can't turn them. Again, that's because we have this coon prowling around and he's huge and he's big and he's strong and I didn't want him to be able to possibly open this door. And I'm probably not gonna open this for anything until spring when I clean it out. We just sank these screws that normally are loose enough for these to, to spin on, super snug. So hopefully there's no way the coon can figure out how to open four of them. Originally there was two and I had them all painted to match and we decided to be extra secure and add a couple more and I haven't got my paintbrush back out to make them match as well yet. But that's the idea. The whole thing swings up here and as you can see it's off the ground so I can, can roll something under that and muck out directly into it and then remove the manure into the compost to become garden fertilizer etc. But that's how the muck outdoor works. So that is the uh, chicken barn and run setup. I think it is something I'm going to end up using every single day for probably the rest of my life. Um, the things that aren't done yet would be if we ever choose to insulate the inside. Either way, I would like to paint the inside, uh, probably just like a whitewashed white to make it brighter and easy to clean in there. Um, I guess the chickens think the forecast is going to be right about the snow because they're acting like they want to go back inside for the day and usually they don't come back till closer to evening. And they, um, it, the roof looks black, but it is going to have some black tin on it. Um, we have it ordered, hasn't showed up yet. If it does early enough that we can get it on before winter, we will. Either way, the roof is dried in with a, a solid um, like ice and water shield that's supposed to be good for quite a few months. Hopefully we'll get the tin on it. That's not done, but the building's nearly done. It's done as far as the chickens are concerned. You can see they're um, happily milling all about, and it seems to be working to be even with our big, small grizzly bear sized coon prowling around who can apparently, um, you know, even lift chicken tractors that takes me some strength to lift. Uh, he has not successfully gotten in to this in any way. So that seems to be working. Hopefully that will continue and the chickens will be happy in there all winter long whenever they're not out <laughs> running around. So that's a little look at the almost mostly finished for now <laughs> chicken barn build. over here at Finest. Thank you so much for watching these videos and spending some of your very valuable time choosing to do that. We hope you found something that was useful, educational, helpful, maybe save someone else some time and trouble, or just something just plain beautiful. If you don't want to miss any videos, subscribe and hit the bell. And thanks for coming along on our journey as we build a new little homestead with our tiny house and everything to come.